been there, doing that. Stop bullying me! I won't stand for this disrespect. Okay, I'm done. Hi everyone, this is Josh, and today I'm back after a break of working on things that I actually get paid for to talk about Dune. As a quick warning, this review will contain some spoilers, so if you don't want to hear any of them, then go to this point in the video so you can see what my final score is. There's your warning. Three, two, one. Dune was written by John Spates, Eric Roth, and Denis Villeneuve. It's based off the beloved book of the same name, written by Frank Herbert in 1965. This is the second live-action film adaptation. David Lynch directed the first one in 1984. This time, it's directed by French-Canadian filmmaker Denis Villeneuve. Some of his work includes Sicario, Enemy, Arrival, and Blade Runner 2049. All of those films are pretty great. You should watch them. I've reviewed both Arrival and Blade Runner 2049 on this channel, the latter of which being one one of the best sequels and one of the best modern sci-fi films I've ever seen. And with Dune, Denis Villeneuve once again tackles science fiction, except this time he's working with source material that has been notoriously difficult to adapt. Dune follows Paul Atreides, played by Timothy Chalamet, who is a gifted young prince of House Atreides that has to travel to the most dangerous planet in the universe, Arrakis, to ensure the future of his family and people. As competing forces conflict over the planet's precious supply of spice, Paul must overcome his fears to survive. It feels like it's been an eternity since I saw the first teaser trailer for this film. I remember watching it and being cautiously optimistic about it. If there's one director you can bet on making an intelligent and engaging film, look no further than Denis Villeneuve, who doesn't need spectacle or action to grab your attention. At the same time, though, the story of Dune has garnered this reputation over the years of being an unfilmable story that even good directors haven't been able to handle because of how dense it is. The most notable of which being David Lynch, who said recently that his version remains a, quote, huge gigantic sadness in my life. Another well-respected director, Alejandro Jodorowsky, wasn't even able to get his version past pre-production because of many problems, money being a big one. So I think it's safe to say that trying to adapt this story into a film is like playing a notoriously hard video game like Dark Souls and then setting the difficulty to You really like dying, don't you? Given this extensive history and also given the fact that I haven't read the book, or seen David Lynch's version, I was worried that this adaptation would either be too difficult for me to understand, or it just wouldn't work. Except Denis Villeneuve is very good at what he does, and was smart enough to only tackle the first half of the book with this film, so it wouldn't get totally overloaded with information. And after having a better than expected opening weekend at the box office, Dune 2 has officially been greenlit by Warner Brothers so he can tackle the other half of the book in that next film. That's a big relief for a lot of people who weren't a big fan of the ending, which is a cliffhanger. I'm so excited about the sequel because I really enjoyed this film. None of the concerns I laid out were a problem. I felt like I had a solid grasp on the story and was really sucked in by it. This is easily one of the best looking films of this year. It's gonna be one of the best theater experiences you have. I loved everything about it on a technical level. I think it does an excellent job of showing you the scale of this massive universe, which really helps with world building. The acting is good, which is to be expected from this incredibly talented cast. I think Timothy Chalamet is a good fit as the main character, Paul Atreides. I found myself invested in his struggle to find his identity. You learned very early on that he's inherited these supernatural abilities passed down from his mother, who belongs to a strict matriarchal order called the Ben Gesserit, who are kind of intimidating. He's still trying to hone his powers like the voice, which is a way of being able to control people by modulating your pitch. He struggles with doing so at the beginning when his mom is testing him. One of the best scenes in this movie involves the Ben Gesserit reverend played by a very scary Charlotte Rampling testing the protagonist's mental power by seeing how he'll react to having his hand put inside of a box that causes an intense pain. It's apparently the equivalent of having your hand set on fire. There's a lot to unpack in order to fully explain why the Ben Gesserit performs this test, also known as the Gam Jabbar test on Paul. In a nutshell, they're trying to gauge his humanity and see if he may possibly have unique powers. Right before Paul starts, the Reverend Ben Gesserit tells him that an animal caught in a trap will gnaw off its own leg to escape. She then puts a poison needle up to his neck and tells him that if he removes his hand from the box, he will die. The goal is to determine whether Paul's awareness is stronger than his instinct. It's one of several great scenes in the film. It's incredibly well directed, and it's a really important moment for the main character and his mother, whose relationship is now called into question since his mom is working with this group of people who were thinking about killing him. Thanks, Thanks mom. Love you. The film places a lot of its focus on the relationship between these two characters. I think it's interesting because of this uncertainty on whether or not Paul can trust his mom. 
I also like the internal conflict Paul faces about whether or not he can be the same type of leader that his father is. I thought it was a very relatable struggle, especially for people who are suffering from imposter syndrome, which is a lot of people, I presume. There's a touching scene towards the beginning of the film where he raises this question to his father, and he asks him, what if I can't be the leader of House Atreides? I think what he's really asking underneath is, will you still love me if I don't live up to these expectations? And his father, played by Oscar Isaac, replies, a great man doesn't seek to lead. He is called to it. But if your answer is no, you'd still be the only thing I ever needed you to be, my son. There's more powerful, memorable quotes like this throughout. Another big one being fear is the mind killer, which is a mantra that's repeated often. And I think the film does a really good job at nailing these brief yet emotional moments between these characters so the human element isn't totally lost within this very dense story. What also helps carry the emotional core of the film is Hans Zimmer's score, which is persistent throughout. I love how Villeneuve's films often blend music with the sounds of the environment, making it hard to distinguish if what you're hearing is diegetic or non-diegetic sound, which I think helps makes the experience a little more immersive. Speaking of immersive, I feel like I have to mention the set design, which is incredible. I love the fact that they used a lot of practical sets and didn't rely too heavily on green screen. There's a really interesting clash of ancient culture slash architecture and high-tech spaceships and devices. This is a sci-fi film at the end of the day, but it sometimes feels more like a period piece. The costume design often looks more historical than it does futuristic. This is especially true of the Ben Gesserit and other female characters who wear veils and other outfits that nuns would wear. The Dune universe is also set in a feudal society, very similar to the one in Game of Thrones where there's several houses that control different properties throughout the land or universe and fight for power over those properties, making everything feel medieval. It's also similar to Game of Thrones in that there's a lot of political implications within this universe to establish, a lot of characters to develop, a lot of unfamiliar terminology, a lot of world building. There's so much to explain to make this movie coherent. Denis Villeneuve is somehow able to communicate the amount of information you would get in like a half or maybe even a whole season of Game of Thrones in like two and a half hours. Is it perfect? No. There's definitely parts where it feels like certain plot elements are being kind of rushed through that I didn't have 100% clarity on. There's an assassination attempt on the main character at one point. Shortly after that, they find the assassin dead inside of this like little cubby or hole in the wall. We don't really see how the assassin got there or how they died. During the sequence, we see Oscar Isaac's top advisor discover this and react, and then the film immediately cuts to Oscar Isaac having a conversation with this advisor. There is no establishing or wide shot of his advisor entering into the chamber to chat or doing greetings. It just jumps right into the middle of the conversation to communicate the important points and move on. There's a lot of these types of jump cuts in this movie in an effort to condense time, and it's understandable why the film has to do this given everything I've said up to this point. Normally I prefer films to cut time rather than add time, but in the case of Dune, I would have been totally okay if the film just added another 15 or 20 minutes to flesh out a few scenes that I wanted to see more of, like the attack on House Atreides, which was awesome. But more importantly, I felt like this film could have spent a little more time developing some of the characters, like the villains, who don't get a lot to do in this first film. Alexander Skarsgård is so good, I would have loved to have seen more of him specifically. There's other characters that kind of feel one-dimensional, like Josh Brolin's character, who is this tough guy that I didn't find myself too concerned about since all he ever really does is just be a tough guy. Guys, at the end of the day, this is a solid sci-fi film. It's not Denis Villeneuve's best, and yet it is still probably one of the best films you'll see this year. I'm going to give Dune a 4 out of 5. Thanks for watching, everyone. I really appreciate it. Be sure to leave your thoughts on Dune in the comments section below. Feel free to leave a recommendation on a film or subject that I should discuss next while you're down there. And of course, be sure to subscribe, like this video, hit the bell for notifications, do all the stuff you can so the YouTube algorithm will like me. Thanks again, everyone. This is Josh, Josh. and I will see you in the next review. Take it easy. Bye.